Fierce ladies, welcome to the Moms in Real Estate podcast, where we unleash our unapologetic power to share the raw truth of our journeys. Brace yourself for a dose of empowerment, education, and encouragement like never before. I'm Kristen, a relentless entrepreneur obsessed with connecting and uplifting fellow boss babes. In this podcast, we're all about getting down to business, conquering motherhood, nurturing relationships, and so much more. Get ready to dive into the nitty gritty, embrace the hustle, and unravel the secrets of success in the world of real estate. We're here to ignite your fire, equip you with the knowledge, and unleash your limitless potential. Tune in as we redefine what it means to be a true boss babe. Welcome listeners to another empowering episode of Moms in Real Estate. Today, we have a remarkable guest who embodies the essence of resilience, determination, and the pursuit of greatness. Joining us from the sunny state of California is the incredible Christina Brzezinu. Christina has been in the real estate game for an impressive 26 years, not only achieving remarkable success in her career, but also raising three incredible children along the way. Christina has faced challenges head on, emerging stronger and more determined than ever. Let's tune in to another episode of Moms in Real Estate. Hey girl, how's it going? Good, good. How are you? Good. good. You guys, I'm so excited. As you know, I love having guests in studio and Christina came all the way from Newport and drove here. And not only is she here, but her husband is next to us and her daughter. How cool is that? Yes. Thank you so much for having us. I really, really appreciate it. Yes. Well, yeah. I'm so glad we got connected because I think we got connected through Instagram, right? Right. right. Yes. Yeah. And um, after I had my first phone call with her, her story is so inspiring. I just needed to have her on here. So I really want to talk about, yes, you've been in the real estate industry for a long time. Yes, um, a long time. 26 years. 26 years, yeah. Yes, yeah. so you definitely know your shit. Yes, <laughs> the good, the bad, the ugly, the uglier, the crash, everything. You know? Everything, yeah. 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 The crash in 2008, and then right. here we are today, not the crash, but, you know, it's just yeah. an interesting market. And right, right. So tell me, like, a little bit about, like, why did you even get into this industry? So it kind of, I kind of fell into it. Um, I graduated from high school and I had no idea what I was going to do with my life. It was mm-hmm. a little bit of a mess and I just, you know, had no idea. And so my husband worked at a Century 21 office in Norwalk in, uh, in uh, LA County. And he was working at this office and they needed a receptionist. So reached out to, uh, my cousin reached out to him and I got hired as a receptionist. And from being a receptionist there, a loan officer needed a uh, an assistant, mm-hmm. which I knew nothing. I just knew how to answer the phone mm-hmm. and, you know, take orders, whatever it was. And so she she offered me the job, and I let her I have no idea what I'm doing. And she took me under her wing, and she taught me everything. So uh, in a couple, I was with her for, you know, as her assistant for about two or three years. Mm-hmm. Went on my own, but was under her, you know, under her brokerage for about 15 years, Maria Looney. Uh, which is she's absolutely amazing till today she has a brokerage not too far from our office and uh and kind of just you know learned from there and and she taught me it was back in the day where you know there was no internet really it was mm-hmm. still fax machines and things like that and they were like you get this done there's an approval it's all handwritten chicken mm-hmm. scratch and all that so it was kind of cool to learn you know back then to where we are today it's yeah. all like you know it's, well it's changed so much so was right. your husband selling real estate while you were doing that right but we didn't get together for like you know eight years oh, after wow. that yeah so he you know went on you know doing his thing as a realtor he had just started maybe five years before i started there um so he was a realtor we knew similar people and all that but yeah we you know went on so eight years later we reconnected well it was, that's another whole other story. Yeah. <laughs> that's for a whole other podcast. Yeah, that was a whole other podcast. Yeah. So then, you know, we married in 2000 and, uh, 2001. Uh-huh. Eloped in Vegas, got pregnant, you know, a couple months later. And then fast forward 2005, you know, he's, we partnered up together, but we we're still working for other people. Yeah. And uh, in 2014, well, 2005, we got married, like mm-hmm. an actual wedding because, our parents were like, you didn't have a wedding. You didn't have yeah, anything. Yeah, so we had this <laughs> wedding. Uh, you know, in 2014, we had this opportunity to go on our own venture out. And so we've had our own brokerage since 2014. Okay. So we're direct lenders and we're brokers. So mm-hmm. we have, you know, a lot more product, a lot more wiggle room on the rates, especially right now with the way the market is. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Well, yeah. that's cool. So do you feel like, um, was it a huge leap for you to go from working for somebody to starting your own brokerage? Yes, because even though I'm so experienced, I was already so experienced yeah. in what I did, it'd been years already, but being on the other side as an owner is totally different. Yeah. You know, giving that service of, okay, I have, you know, my team under me, but I also have to manage. I, you know, gave it up to, you know, my old broker. Like she did all this with a lot more people under her. Um, but yeah, totally different ball game. And, mm -hmm. you know, we trial and error, trial and error. We keep going. We kept going. This partnership didn't work out. And we went here, we went there. And finally, where we're at today, it's awesome. I mean, I couldn't, you know. I wouldn't change it for anything right now. Yeah, I think yeah. that that's so cool. I think your whole, I think that we need to even go further back to, so here you are today with your mm -hmm. husband and you guys own this brokerage. You guys have had a lot of success in your business. Mm -hmm. um, and what I always like to tell people is you don't just arrive at success. It's a whole journey and you have to like, you know, really embrace the process. Right. And I think for you, one of the reasons that you embrace the process and grew like you did is just that you're a very tenacious woman. And mm -hmm. like, where does that come from? You know, I, I I grew up, you know, in rough neighborhoods, you know, and as, as I was growing up, we were, you know, kind of moving from this place to that place. We never really had a stable foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, as a family, all my siblings are like, like my youngest sister is 15 years apart, mm -hmm. six years apart from the next one, two years apart from my oldest one, which I never really connected with her till we were 16. So that's a whole other story, right? Mm -hmm. But I always knew there was something inside of me. I knew, like, this is where I came from, but this is not me. Yeah. You know what I mean? We come from low income, but we're high class. I am high class. I know that I meant for something bigger and greater. And I just, you know, went with that. And, and yes, I was lost for, for many, many years. You know, did a lot of internal self-help. Uh, you know, the big guy up there keeps me going. So I just a big believer. Yeah. I think where I am today, you know, my faith is really there and just things yeah. keep changing and, and doors keep opening up, like sitting here with you in person and kind yeah. of, you know, it was a phone call Yeah, and it was like, cool, she's doing that. We're, we're doing something similar. And I just think like, you know, giving, giving back has been big for me and just being, you know, just believing. And sometimes you do lose the faith because in 2008, yeah. you know, Everything happened for my husband and I so fast, right? We yeah. came from nothing. Mm -hmm. And when we got together, we were on top of that hill, you know, mm -hmm. trying to keep up with the Joneses <clears throat> and making this crazy money at 27 and 30 years old. Yeah. You know, and we had babies and we'd done this and we'd done that. I could have any material thing that we wanted, but then there was something missing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like in here, there was something missing. And what was that? You know, just the emptiness. Like I hadn't really like healed. Yeah. You know what I mean? From all these things that, you know, childhood trauma, things like yeah. that. Um, I had looked inside who I really was. And mm -hmm. yes, you know, things were given to what I mean, we worked for them, but it, it just came so easy. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, we had that I, I, I had what I wanted, I thought when, you know, I know I want I want what that rich person has, and I can get that and I want this. Yeah. And then when I got it, I'm like, but there's still like, yeah. something empty here, you know, you have to work on yourself. You gotta That's work on so yourself. important. Yeah. I have a couple questions, like going through that. So like, coming from where you came from and having that feeling of confidence that like you weren't meant for this, you were meant for more. Was it mm -hmm. somebody that like put that there or was that just, you just had that? You know, I was told actually the opposite from, Yeah, for many, many years. Like you just be average and just get by and have a basic job. And not that yeah. there's anything wrong with that, mm -hmm. but I knew that there was inside of me. I just no, there's something better. And I don't know. And I was never afraid. Like if I failed, like get back up Yeah, I fail and get back up. I was very insecure because of my upbringing. Yeah. I was never uh, able to speak my mind and, and share what I really wanted to share. I was always like, put down, you'd be quiet. We couldn't read. We yeah. couldn't, you know, school, forget about it. There was no, you know, college or anything like that, that, mm -hmm. you know, it was barely graduated from high school. And that's because I wanted to graduate, not because it mattered to anybody you know, in my family. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it was just something that was there. And I knew since I was a little girl, I wanted more, you know, and when I would see other people that had this and had that and, you know, just. Was there anyone that you looked up to that you're like, okay, that really like helped me with where I want to go when you were younger? Not really, because I did have, you know, just a lot of negative people yeah. around me that, that, funny how I figured this out later like when you're down you know and, and it goes into like you know you're on drugs and alcohol and people mm -hmm. that just you know it's it's all negative you know yeah. you're in this household and and you think it's normal mm -hmm. you know you think it's normal and it wasn't until like Maria Looney my broker like she took me under her wing and she had this beautiful car and she had this beautiful home and 
she was a hustler and I'm like I want that yeah you know I want that but then I had that but then there was the other part you know so that it could all come together but I, I mean from you know other than my husband like really stepping in and like seeing you know like he would tell me like if you saw what I see mm -hmm. if you saw in the mirror what I see in you and it was there but you know I had the, the blindfold on and I couldn't I couldn't see I couldn't see beyond that you know and yeah and that's why like I started doing the women's groups because I feel that there's there's a lot of women out there that have that blindfold on that mm -hmm. do need us women you know to uplift them like I see you like pumping everybody up whether it's business spiritual mm -hmm. family financial whatever it is like you know we had a we had an event uh, a women's brunch a spiritual women's brunch on Saturday and two weeks I was able to get 36 women in the room you know and yeah I the whole purpose of it was just that's like, hard it's hard yeah <laughs> but the fact and, and it was just me I I messaged about 100 women yeah you know I, I can get 20 people in in two weeks right yeah. 20 women and just like you see the vulnerability like when you share like we're not perfect mm -mm. you know I share with them you know we put on a mask every morning we put on our makeup and how do you feel every morning when you wake up that's yeah. what's important and you want to share with everybody and social media all this stuff that we post is you know it's just social media but yeah who are we really at the end of the day is what's we, important well actually i just had um one of my retreats it's called the money moves retreat and one of the educators there she's so put together i mean you look at her and you're just like man she is killing yeah, it yeah. and she's perfect and blah 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 and we were going around the table and everyone was like talking about their biggest takeaways from the trip and her biggest takeaway was that everyone has problems. And I'm mm. like, it's crazy that she, you know, she was say, saying that she, you know, and she has a lot of problems. Yeah. Everyone has a lot of problems. Everyone has problems. Um, right. And I feel like maybe just because I've been interviewing moms in real estate for six years, I know we're all shit shows. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm very aware yeah, of it. Such a good kids. Like there's something you're always juggling so much. Yeah. So much. Yeah, it's a lot. Hi, it's Barbara with your tax coach. And we love helping entrepreneurs save money on their taxes. Here's a quick tax tip. This is one of my favorite tax tips. It's called the primary residence exclusion. If you've lived in your primary residence for two out of the last five years, you can qualify for a tax exclusion of up to $500,000 if you're married. So say you bought a house for four hundred k, you can sell it two years later for nine hundred thousand and pay nothing in taxes. For more info, follow us on Instagram at Your Tax Coach or go to our website, YourTaxCoach.com. Okay, so the other question that I was thinking in my head was, you know, you're 26, 27 with your husband, you guys are doing great, and you felt this like, okay, you haven't worked on yourself. So I feel like when you get to that point, working on yourself can be really hard to like figure out what that path is for you. I know I went through this, and I'm recently like figuring out more of that journey for myself. Mm -hmm. um, what did that look like for you? How did you go in and like heal your childhood trauma and like, because I feel like you're so spiritual now. Were you at that age? No. So we weren't raised, you know, with, I mean, you're baptized as a Catholic and yeah. you, know, you hated going to church or yeah. I did, whatever, right? I didn't understand it. Yeah. But when I, when I was married, you know, there was like drugs and alcohol involved, you know, yeah. because I was looking for something else to numb everything else, you know, and it started when I was 12 years old and I have children right now. And I have three beautiful kids, and I could never imagine. In my mind, I would always think, there's no way, you know, and did everything possible so that did not happen, you know. And at 12 years old, you know, I took a path that just was not good for me. And, um, you know, 12, 12 years old all the way through 22, 23 years old. And it's so crazy because I believe God was always there, but I was, my faith was not that big. Yeah. But... But I knew there was something bigger, always something there. And like, what am I doing? I'm hanging out with losers. Or I'm not, and I never bought drugs in my life, ever. Mm -hmm. I never needed to. It was just, it was almost the other side, just throwing it at me, you know, mm -hmm. right? Just to keep me down, keep me down. And so when I met Maria, my broker, you know, I, I got into work and I can do this. And this is a whole other, it opened up this whole other world for me. And that's when I knew, like, I don't want to be around those people anymore. And when I got married with my husband, uh, you know, one thing he said, he goes, never again you don't touch that again or we're done like mm -hmm. that's it we're done he's like i and he's that guy that he can cut you off and never look back you know so it was kind of like a cold turkey thing and not that i was a complete drug addict on the street on the floor but it was like functional and it was like just normal a normal life to be around all these people all the time but you know so so all that happened so i had to do just a quick quick story is he dropped me off at this korean center 
And I remember walking in and he just said like, you know, he had had a conversation with him prior to going there because he didn't know what to do. And I was just a little off, you know, just not stable. And so he dropped me off and then he's walking out. I'm like, what are you doing? I thought we're doing this together. And he's like, no, no, no. He's like, please help my wife. And so I did this, uh, like, I don't know, six months to a year of this training with these Koreans, meditation and like spiritual trainings. And you cried, you had to sit there and tell yourself that you loved yourself. And I couldn't, like, okay, I love myself. I swear it was like four hours and these masters were like, no, you, you're not gonna sit here until you really believe that you love yourself. There was a uh, training that we did out here in Cottonwood in the middle of nowhere, 40, 40 people from all over the country. And so we did a lot of healing, you know, and, and I went on to like, I went to this seminar, that seminar, I did, you know, $10,000 seminars and training with these women. And on, then, then at that point, okay, I'm an entrepreneur, but I'm still screwed up. I'm like, what is, what is wrong, you know? <laughs> and so it wasn't until recently, and I'm not, you know, I'm not here to talk about religion, to talk about spirit. We love Jesus know? on the show. Okay, mm-hmm. so, you know, Recently in, in June, I, I, I had my event, right? And I still, you know, when I go up there and speak, I just like, oh my God, you know, mm-hmm. like deer in headlights. <laughs> yeah, deer in headlights. And so I joined this group, you know, on, on Zoom, a six week course where we, um, where we talk about, you know, they were helping you with public speaking, right? And from there, you know, I, used to, I belonged to a church in 2019. I started going to this church, and then the pandemic hit. Mm-hmm. And so I, you know, everybody, you know, the whole world shut down. Everybody went their own ways, all that. And so fast forward, you know, three years later, they they reopened up and they're trying to grow the church again. That's what Tim's story. I don't know if you've heard uh, Tim's story, Mm-mm. Paige Eunice. So it's in Orange County in okay. uh, Yorba Linda. Okay. Somewhere. Wait, yeah. maybe I have. Tim's story, he's huge. Okay. He's like traveled to like 80 something countries and yeah, he's a, he's a pastor. He's like, goes around preaching. Okay. Um, but he's also, also motivational speakers and all yeah. that, right? So anyway, I go back to church and you know, it's, it's like, I'm just kind of trying to figure it out again and this and that. And you kind of start feeling some kind of way. And then you st- I start feeling some kind of way. And my husband's always been super spiritual and like close to God and the whole thing. And, you know, praying for me was kind of like, well, who's watching me pray? And like, <laughs> yeah. okay, let's do this whole thing, you know? Until one day, you know, Tim's story happened to be there. And, and he travels most of the time. So the other pastors who are also amazing, um, you know, they he did, the, he did you know, the, I don't know what you call it. Like, he, he was the pastor. Yeah, right? the service. Yeah, uh-huh. he was the service, right. And so he just got me. Like, he just got me. And I was like, we're going to go to a brunch after church and I'm just like a mess and yeah. I'm looking at him we're kind of arguing my husband and I that day before we got to church and he's looking at me and I'm like don't look at me and <laughs> nobody look at me yeah I couldn't stop crying yeah I couldn't stop crying so mm-hmm. I'm just like crying and crying and crying and I walked out when we're done and Tim's you know we're crossing paths because he had gone off stage and I just looked at him and I said can I hug you mm-hmm. I said I don't know what that was I don't know what that encounter was but there was something there and he's like that was good I'm like that was good. <laughs> He's like, yeah. <laughs> so fast forward, it kind of ties in. So fast forward, uh, last month, I was going to go meet my girlfriends at Neiman Marcus for this event, this and that. And the pastor page, you know, we've been going to church since then because there's something there. And my son is like, well, can I go, mama? I'm like, of course you can come. He's 16. And so, you know, the, you know, I've been kind of getting close with the pastor. And she had asked me if uh, I owned a Bible. And I said, no, I don't. And she goes, well, can you get one? I said, sure. And I'm like, we don't have a Bible in the house. We never yeah. have, you know. And so my son's like, Mom, I have one. And I'm like, where do you have a Bible? <laughs> yeah. and like, I ordered one on Amazon a year ago. And he's like, I've been reading the Bible. And I'm like, Tristan. Oh, I love that. How old your son? 16. Okay. So then that's when he's like, you know, been going to church with us, the whole thing. And so fast forward, you know, when I was got invited to the Neiman Market, the same, the same day, it was a Saturday, Paige Eunice is, you know, the other pastor, she invited me to this women's brunch in San Dimas, which is like an hour drive from Newport Beach. And I don't wasn't ready for like for like a Christian women's like my my thing is like hanging out with my girls and yeah. like having our wine and things like that, you know? Christian women do that. I know, I know, <laughs> which is really cool. It was weird for me too yeah, at first. Because I was you know, because I when I grew up like the Christians that I knew were like, you don't dance, you don't drink, yeah. you don't any you know what I mean? So yeah. it was kind of like it's too godly for me or this or that. But yeah. I met this whole other like family of christians that are like it's okay and they're not judgmental you know you have black black, white mexican Mm -hmm. indians you know hippies whatever like you find all this this is 
great community, right? Mm-hmm. So I ended up going to this Christian thing, right? And because uh, my girlfriend's like, come on now. She's like, Neiman Marcus or this, right? So I go and, uh, you know, they were talking about this. And it was a woman that was very beautiful. It was a beautiful view at this women's home. And so we were done. So then I'm texting my girlfriends and I'm like, I'm on my way. I said, this is done like an hour early and I can meet you guys. And so then we're going to pray, right? And if you need prayer, they're like, you know, stand up and pray. We're having some issues with my oldest daughter who's here right now. And, <laughs> oh. and so I stood up, you know, I wanted to pray for her and I wanted to pray for this other woman. And so when I got up and they started praying, I just felt like this weight in my hands. Mm-hmm. Weight in my hands that like drop, right? And this whole weight all over me, right? And I'm like, okay, this is BS. Like this is, I don't know what's happening right now. This play went on for about 15, 20 minutes. And I was shaking, and I was crying, and yeah, it was the Holy Spirit that was it. Yeah. And I didn't know, and I had no idea, but I knew, like, I was, like, kind of fighting it, whatever was happening, and I couldn't. Like, it was stronger, and I was ready, and he's like, stop. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm here, stop. And so since then, like, you know, I'm not holy Jesus woman. I, You know, I don't know how to read the Bible yet. I don't know how to, you know, how to do all these things, but I know that I'm in a good place, and I'm and I meant to even do bigger and greater things, you know, yeah. and it's it's a calling and it just feels amazing. I'm in just in a really amazing space in my life. And nothing's perfect. It's still, yeah. you know, every day Nobody at church is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. the that's the beauty of like being Christian. Yeah. We're all a mess. Yeah, it's a mess, but it's a beautiful mess. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're just You're just kind of like in like you're surrendering, which exactly. I think is so that's awesome. Exactly. Yeah. It's just like a surrender and and doors are opening up and things are happening and things are moving and Mm -hmm. even in real estate like you know you're you're giving and you're giving every time you go to church and but the more you give like the return of it is like even so much bigger in relationships Mm -hmm. and our relationship at home is you know much better Mm -hmm. and it just feels good it does I love that and even just you being here is so cool because this podcast is like it's so crazy I swear it's like I don't scout out people that love Jesus at all Mm -hmm. but somehow I would say 97% of the people that sit across from me like talk Mm -hmm. about Jesus and I got baptized in 2021 Mm -hmm. I was LDS growing up and so I started doing this podcast with a girl named Angela Fazio and she prayed for me for years to like know Jesus yeah and so in 2020 I went to church with her finally after like years of her asking me to go I was like fine I'm gonna go and so Anyways, it's just kind of cool because I feel like this podcast has really, like, opened my eyes. And I feel like just sitting across from you hearing your story, like, it's, I literally feel like we're very similar. Like, yeah. it's so great. Yeah, even talk, even when I, you know, when we first had the conversation on Zoom and all that, and I, it just, you made me feel comfortable. Good. You know, being myself. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. that. Yeah. And your story is so great. Thank you. So Thank you so much. Why don't we why don't we wrap it up with a little bit of business? Like okay. maybe you could tell people like, you know, you 26 years in real estate. Mm-hmm. It's like no joke, you guys. This industry is so hard. So, if you were to tell somebody like in this tough market, right? What is any words of advice that you'd give somebody that's struggling right now because you've been through this yeah. and oh. harder? Yes, losing everything in 2012 and yeah. rebuilding, you know, yes. from scratch. You know, just just keep moving forward. Stay in your lane. Stay with people that are positive. And, you know, you hear all that negativity, all that, you know, oh, my God, I'm sorry you're in real estate. No, actually, it's great. Yeah. You know, and I tell even the, the people that want to come into real estate right now, I said, if you come into real estate right now, this is a real deal and you're going to make it. Because a lot of people, you know, get in when it's so easy and it's falling on your lap. But this is like we're the true, like, real estate mortgage people in the industry right now. Just, you know getting through it but just hang in there stay in your lane you know have a group uh, a group of you know just positive team leaders around you you yeah. know you're with exp we're with exp and it's you know you get all that support so yeah. i think that's what's helping us a lot and you know go out to you know, different events stay connected network you know yes. post on social media every day a little something but you know Make yourself a person of interest and put yourself out there. Even I, I you know, I told you, I'm like, dear Wait, I, are you coached by Coach Michael Burt? 
I, I did. That's why that's where you just got the person of interest. I'm like, I love I love his whole thing yeah. about becoming a person of interest, and I think it's so relevant yeah. in our industry. If you guys don't know him, go to YouTube. Michael Burt, right? Yeah, yeah. I did that six co- that six uh, week course, uh, the public speaking course with him. Yes. and Tim oh, Story. I didn't know he does public speaking courses. I would totally yeah. take it. Yeah, yeah. It was a, they were awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, and honestly, even just the free amount of knowledge he gives out on YouTube is yeah. awesome. But he yeah. coaches the Honey Badger Group is how I knew him. Okay, and it, and it's simple stuff. Like so simple. 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 Simple but that yeah, you can implement that you know in your business and it works. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. And even you putting yourself on the podcast is just a great uh, example of how you're implementing that. Yeah. So yeah. good. Thank you. Okay, so uh, let's one more thing, you guys. She does an event that is awesome. The first time she did it, she put it together in six weeks, and two hundred and thirty people came. Uh, two hundred. So yeah. So yeah. that was our third event. Oh, the third was, one. It was a third. But it was event. six weeks that you threw it, it was, together. Yeah, it was six weeks. Yeah, we put it together, and we weren't gonna do because it it's so much work that comes with it. And then people are like, "When's your event next year?" Yeah. And I didn't say we're not having. It. I'm like, "Oh, it's sometime in April." Yeah. And I'm like George. I'm like they're. You we know, gotta they're, get a date. Yeah, so we just we just did it and said so, yeah. So it was George and I, my husband and I, and my and our assistant Adalia, and in six weeks we put it together. Yeah, That's we so put and, and a lot of people that came in to help us and you know jumped in at the last minute, our staff, our kids, everybody. So this year is again you know in twenty twenty four. It's gonna be sometime in April. We're looking for a uh, for location. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be much bigger. So if somebody wants to be in community with you, I talk about all the time, you've gotta put yourself in the room. So if you heard this podcast and you're like, I really wanna be in a room with her, then go get yourself in a room with her, follow her on Instagram and keep your eyes out for her event. What's your Instagram handle? Uh, at your fit lender. At your fit lender. So it'll be in the show notes too, but definitely go give her a follow and wait for her event. And yeah, I'm yes. so glad. Thank you so much Thank for coming so much. on. Thank you, I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you. Hi, it's Kim and Whitney from Real Social Agent, and we love helping real estate professionals create social media content that helps them grow their business. If you're a real estate professional looking to save time and create more effective content, we're about to make your life so much better. You're amazing at what you do, and we're here to make sure everyone else knows that. From social media coaching to custom content creation, our job is to make you shine. Follow us on Instagram at Real Social Agent or download our free Reels 101 library at the link in the show notes. Thanks, friend, for listening to the podcast. We love having you in our community. If you enjoyed our podcast, please leave us a review or share it with a friend. Also, we'd love to connect with you on Instagram. Go follow us at Moms in Real Estate.